All right, and it's time for another Walking Dead retro review. I'm Justin. I'm Jesse. She did it. You said you were going to do your intros as a zombie. <laughs> That's perfect. We are a channel that podcasts about a couple of different things, but we do talk about The Walking Dead quite a bit. That's how we got our start, and we try to keep it going. So we are going back in time and reviewing old episodes of The Walking Dead. We're currently in Season 4, Jesse's first time ever seeing my bajillionth time ever seeing, but it's fun to get a fresh new perspective. If you like this podcast, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, don't forget these are available over on SoundCloud. You can get them on Spotify, iTunes, uh, and a host of other places. I got to get them on Amazon Music soon enough. But anyways, uh, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 11. It's called Claimed. It was written by Sith Man. Like, it looks like Seth with, like, an extra I, and it's, like, Seth Man. Seath? Seath? Seath, maybe, with two N. So it's, like, Sith Man. Anyways, written... They all have weird names. I don't know. <laughs> written by Nicole Beatty and Seth Hoffman. It originally aired February 23rd of 2014. And, Jesse, this one was a little tense. It was. A little. A little. I was sweating with Rick. I was dripping. Man, we should all be so lucky. I was sweating with Rick Grimes. <laughs> but yeah, no, this episode definitely, um, you know, they're back out in the wild in a sense. You know, they're not protected behind the prison where yeah. they're in control. So they're back out in the wild and they've ran across their first group of, I'd say, some pretty rough folks. Some pretty rough folks, especially when you strangle yeah. your own boy out over a bed. Right? Hmm. Mm, you ever done? You ever done that to a friend? Be like, I want your spot, and then they're like, No. So then you strangle them, and then you take their spot. Only when I was in the zombie apocalypse. That's the only time that will fly. Mm, we have very different friendships. Well, that's why <laughs> you know. So opposites attract. We find Rick is uh, doing a little better. He's up and at him. He's moving around. You know, uh, Michonne and Carl go off to do a little um, scavenging on their own. Rick stays back at home, which probably, when you think about it, was for the best. Because if Rick wasn't there to, like, warn them when they walked back up, if Rick would have been with them, they probably yeah. would have just waltzed right back in there. And who knows how that would have went. Bad. It would have went badly. And what do you think about this group so far? Do you find them to be a little frightening? The ones in the house? Yes. Are we going to see more of them? They're not just passerbys? Do you want to see more of them? No, I don't like them. Because I'm pretty sure so far they've killed two of their own people. <laughs> well, Rick killed Rick killed one of their people. And then Did he? The other one, you know. No, no, no. I'm talking about... I'm pretty sure when they got in a tussle, when Rick woke up, he heard them fighting downstairs. They didn't kill someone. Mm, let's then, go back and, and watch that. Um, I mean, they're definitely, you know, they definitely seem like the kind of people that wouldn't be above that. Uh, well, yeah, because they did it. And also, Rick opening the door to the bathroom was really smart. It was. I still, and I know, I know the answer is because it was for TV, but I still want to know why that guy was sitting on the toilet with his pants completely pulled up. He was on the toilet. Doesn't he know that it doesn't work? <laughs> I don't know, but like it's weird. Rick comes in and rounds the corner, and there's a dude just sitting fully clothed with his pants up and everything, just just chilling on the toilet. Is that what he was doing? Yeah, he was just sitting on the toilet. That's why Rick and him had that kind of awkward, like, oh, snap moment. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm sure he was supposed to be taking a dump, which in the apocalypse, yes, the water doesn't run. But if you're in a random house that you're not going to live in, wouldn't you rather just sit on a toilet and take a dump? Uh, 100. As opposed to having to go squat in the woods. So, you know, I guess it was just like a little old comfort. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So my fault. But also he was, his pants were up. So that's not what he was doing at all. It was really weird. Like, what do we Maybe mean? he was like rolling a joint or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, I don't typically sit on the toilet to, to do if I was going to do that. But, you know. Well, if you're doing something in secret that you don't want anyone to know about, you go to the bathroom because they're not going to bug you there unless they're your kids. He's like, look, these, these people, my people strangle each other over beds. If they know I got some, <laughs> some, some, some sticky, green. some sticky icky, they might kill me for it. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's where I would go. How did you like uh, the the Michonne and Carl alone time? Like you really get to, you know, get to, we're getting to know Michonne even more and Carl's getting, because we as the audience saw like glimpses of Michonne's past, but they hadn't. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, it's interesting that, you know, now the Carl is learning about her past. I, I always love their alone time because I feel like, Michonne is turning into like the mother figure that he needs and misses. And also, I think it's awesome that she disclosed to him that she hasn't told anyone that she had a son. That right. should make him feel extra, extra, extra special and trust her a lot, you know, even though he already does, but still. Carl's playing 21 questions too. Michonne's like, hold up. <laughs> like, hold up. There are rules. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. That was crazy when she walked into that room and saw those the kids and the parents or whatever and then she he was like there's a baby in there she's like it's a dog i feel bad for carl when they were talking about like soy milk and um which is oh yeah is disgusting by the way and you know they're talking <laughs> about that and you know carl gets real sad because he thinks of judith because yeah can, i can't wait for him to realize that judith judith is actually alive yep Cause how crazy would that be to think someone is dead, and then you and then you realize they're not? Can you imagine like, the, the the relief? Oh yeah, I I, mean, I can't imagine, but I got to imagine it'd be nice. Then they find that yeah. family that all unalive themselves together. That was kind of sad. Oh, that was sad. But also, how did they know about the head thing? What head thing? Shooting him in the head. What do you mean? Well, how did they all know to shoot in the head so that they didn't become zombies? I don't think that's why they did that. I think they were just unaliving themselves. I mean, when most people unalive themselves, that's usually their method. They don't shoot themselves in the gut. You're right. You're right. You're right. (laughs) Well... Either way, smart on their part. I'm like, poor Jesse thinks she's got a good point. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought, though. I was like, okay, they're they're ahead of the time. Mm-hmm. They knew when no one else did. Cool. But now, you're right. Now, you, that is you, how. You, you got to know our new group a little bit better. Mm-hmm. You know, with Glenn and Tara. And- maybe they're not bad guys. <laughs> Uh, what did you think of them? I mean, did you like any of them in particular? Not like any of them? What'd you think? I mean, this is a whole new group of people. Okay. Well, the mullet guy reminds me of the other smart dude, the governor's. What was his name? Milton. Milton. I can never remember his name. He reminds me of him so much, and it's kind of cute. But I don't know. I don't really, I, I don't think they're bad guys now. But I still don't really know how I feel about them as people. What do you think yeah. about the claim that Eugene is a scientist and that they're going to go save the world? I mean, <laughs> how does that make you feel? Uh, as soon as he was like, he knows the secret. It's classified. He said it's classified. I said he don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's full of it. <laughs> He's full of but that. <laughs> I think that Abraham knows or that he thinks the guy knows. I like the conversation between Abraham and uh, Tara when they when he's killing the zombies or whatever, and then like you know she's like, what did she say? He's she's like, I've never seen that before, and he's like, you've done the same thing yourself, and she's like, yeah, but you were smiling. Oh yeah, was that this episode? Yeah, I think that was last episode. Was that last? Did we not talk about that at all? Oh wait, no, I guess maybe that was this episode. I, I had to watch it in parts, so the beginning of it kind of feels like it's been a while. I was going to say, no, because last episode you just <laughs> met them. And this step, this episode, mm-hmm. you're getting to know them yeah. a little bit better because they wake up with Glenn in the back of the truck. And he's mm-hmm. like, did we pass a bus? And she's like, yeah, which is funny because in the apocalypse, man, in this world, they'll walk anywhere. And it's like, you know, the thought is they're driving. And he's like, how, how far back was it? And she's like, three hours. And he's like, stop the truck. Like, you know how long it would take you to walk like three, how, however long they've been, three hours worth of driving, which is many, many miles. It's going to take you quite a while to get back to that bus. Well, they ended up ha- not having a choice, so. 
And I mean, well, I, I guess they could have gone the other way, but I hike. So, they like, were. I, you know, I like walking, but I just I don't know how fast he was mm-hmm. going. But I imagine in a time where there's no speed limits or other cars on the road, they probably were making pretty good, you know, pretty good speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But Tara, where does she get a marker? Mm, that's a good question. Either good, way. Marking all the signs really on her and stuff. Mm hmm. That was smart. She's smart. I like her. Yeah, I like Tara. What do you think about uh, Abraham and uh, Glenn's fight, man? Glenn ain't a big guy, but he was he was doing his thing. He gonna get he gonna get back to his wife. Don't get between a man and his apocalypse. Oh, I was gonna wife. say, love will carry you through. Yes, it'll it will. carry you through a horde of zombies, and it'll carry you through a GI Joe looking ginger man. G.I. <laughs> Joe Ginger Man. That is from now mm-hmm. on what we will be called. We will never call him Abraham again. He will from henceforth be G.I. Joe Ginger Man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Glenn is so badass. I am so happy that he <laughs> he has made it this far. Because <laughs> I don't want him to go. If he ever dies, I'm just going, I will cry. Well, I will cry. I, you know, I I think I, I told you back in the beginning, you know, regardless of how long he lives, one thing I've always liked about Glenn is I felt of all the characters in the show, his character progression was the most natural. Like some people yeah. like flip real quick. Something happens and all of a sudden they become this whole other person. Whereas with Glenn, they definitely, you know, took the time and Glenn is slowly evolving into a badass through his experiences and through the things he's been through. It's not like one little thing happened and all of a sudden he goes from being the scared former pizza delivery dude to like, Oh, I'm a bamf. It's like, no, he, you know, he's slowly getting himself there. Yeah. I love it. He, I, not at all the same person, but it was very gradual. Yeah, absolutely. Like it would be in the real world when there's a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> oh, definitely. Ta- you know, people are, are shaped by their environment, by the people they're around. So to get to a certain point, it's a long road usually for most people. You know, the whole yeah. it's, something happens and then you just change your personality totally. It's not really as realistic. So with Glenn, I feel like you get some very natural character progression. It doesn't feel forced mm-hmm. or just for the sake of the story. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so you see him throwing down with Abraham, which Abraham bro was going to take him, but Glenn won't won't back him down one bit. No. And as soon as they started fighting, I was like, "All right, let's just be really loud, guys. Let's just be really <laughs> loud and let all the zombies know where you are." And then they start coming out. The thing I said, "Zombies of What did I say? What is it? Children of the corn." I said, "Zombies of the corn coming out." And then they did. And then Eugene mm-hmm. completely disabled their vehicle. He's like, well, I like when I, I, I like Abraham a lot. The the big, you know, the G.I. Joe. What do we call him? G.I. Joe Ginger Man. The G.I. Joe Ginger Man. I like his character a lot. And I like how he's telling that story of like blowing up a camel or something. And then yeah. he gets out and he's like, so how in the holy hell did you manage to kill this vehicle? Yeah, that was a good story. I didn't know where that was going. I didn't know where the story was going, but I liked it. I like where it went. It was good. What about Rosita? She's she's hot. I don't know. Not well, not I, doing it for you. I mean, she's a little much. A little the much. The clothes are a little much, but I get that in the comics that would seem like a very good comic character. But for some reason, in real life, it isn't doing it for me. Mm. You need more coverage, girl. True. You that. need more coverage. But I don't know. I like her because so far, because she um was starting to follow Glenn. She yeah. was the first one. Seems like she's got some sense about her. You know, like she's yeah. like, look, this isn't working. Let's just go where they're going. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh, I do. I, I think that everybody should be running around in the apocalypse, not in short shorts, but in. I would be wearing a duct tape suit. Like, I would find some clothes and duct tape everything but the joints, like the knees and the elbows, so I could bend them. <laughs> and then that way, zombies could never bite you. Well, I guess... I mean, I wouldn't be fashionable to... or looking good, but hey, I guess what? You think about that as you're laying there turning into a zombie, and I'm running away right? in my, my duct tape suit. Your duct tape suit. That would suck. You'd have to leave, like, a little flap for the butt. My apocalypse uh, name oh, is... Excuse me. Duct Tape Man... <laughs> can we do that can you be that for halloween like duct tape man 
What we should do is we should get together on Halloween and both wrap ourselves in duct tape. And when people are like, what are you supposed to be? Be like, uh, zombie apocalypse survivors. Thank you very much. Uh, this is why uh, I hence, live and you don't. Hence the survivors part. <laughs> yeah, like we're alive and you're not going to be because you didn't like the duct tape suit because you didn't think it was fashionable. But now you're bit and you're dying. I bet we yeah. get kicked out of the Halloween party. <laughs> I feel like y- y'all need to I, go. <laughs> no way. No way. Can you imagine being in Rick's situation though? Like he lays down with a nice book, thing. Your son and your 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 you know, well your your son and Michonne are out there doing their thing, and you're just like, all right, I'm gonna read a book, and then I'm gonna relax. It was a collection of short stories that looked like an interesting book, and then you wake up to the sound of people busting into your house. Yeah, I thought he was dreaming at first. I was really hoping he was dreaming. And that was it. I'm telling you, I was stressed, stressed. It's not even the word. There's not a word for what I was. It was definitely a high tense episode. I mean, Rick's sleeping and all of a sudden he's in a house with who knows how many people. And then I I thought he handled it. I thought he handled himself well, though. 100 percent. I don't know. I don't know how. How was he quiet? He's like a ninja. He is like a ninja, and he was dripping sweat. He was nervous. I would be, too, man. I would be, too. That's a nerve-wracking situation. It really is. But also, the first guy that laid down on the bed, he stared at that bed for way too long. Like, What are you looking at? He's like, "Mm." it's like of all the bed, I guess because that must have been the master bedroom. Because I've wondered that, too, in a house full of beds. Like, why are they fighting over one bed? But that one just must be the master bed. Like, Well, they said... The other ones were kid beds. Yep. That's what the dude said that he strangled. Or the one that he... Yeah, he got strangled, right? Yeah, he like choked him out. And he saw Rick yeah. right before it was lights out. Mm-hmm. He's like, stop, stop. I'm going to tell you, there's an intruder. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. There's an intruder. Ugh. Intruder. Uh, I don't care. That was beautifully reenacted. It's like I was Thank reliving you. the episode through your actions. Thank you. Very impressed. I'm learning a lot by watching these actors. There are some good ones on the show, that's for sure. Hey, they got Rick on there. He was no good at first. I got I got some hope. Yep. So we got Michonne and Carl getting closer. And like you said, I love them two together. I love how she like balances being a bit motherly and also being a friend to Carl. Like she, yeah, you know, she's got that motherly quality to her, but she also treats him, you know, I think Michonne actually talks to Carl like he's an adult. And I think that's one thing that Carl, you know, Rick's always going to talk to him like he's a kid because he's his kid and other people do. Whereas yeah. Michonne, I feel, kind of speaks to him more like he's an equal, like he's an adult, able to make his own decisions and yada, 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 versus trying to make him feel like a little kid that needs protecting you know, I think yep. she she shows him respect, and I think that's why they click so well. I felt so bad for her when she tried to make him laugh with the cheese. I know, I did too. And he just wasn't having it. I'm like, come on, Carl, give her a sympathetic laugh. Mm. Which he told her, he's like, I was laughing on the inside. On the inside. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So sorry. Thought I saw a zombie. I wondered... Um, yeah, she does talk to him like he's an adult, but at the same time, she cheers him up like you would cheer up a kid. It's oh, yeah. Precious. That's why I say I think I she it. rides that line of being motherly, but yet being a friend perfectly. And I think that's why Carl yeah. has so much respect for her and why they click so well is because, you know, it's not like she's just talking to another kid, whereas so many other people would talk to him like that. Like she actually like lets him talk and she puts trust in him and you know I, I i just love the two of them together me too and also i think i've said this before but i think that michonne and rick are gonna end up together do you really i do you think one do you think she's gonna live that long yeah mm. shut up justin there's some sadness in your future they make the perfect family. I love it. It's got to happen. They really do. They have a great dynamic. Like, you know, Michonne yeah. is a BAMF. Rick is a BAMF. They respect each other. 
uh, work well together. And, and Michonne is a, a great surrogate mom for Carl. So, yeah, yeah, I think they definitely make a good family. That's like one family whose house you don't want to walk into. Like, you don't want to break into that house. Mama no. will kill you. Daddy will kill you. Give him the chance. <laughs> Little boy Carl will kill you. And probably Judith, too. Yep, she'll come and crawling out years. the crib with like a little mini machete. Hey! <laughs> on her back. How cute would that be? She's got stuck a, in her diaper. Strapped to her back, and she's like crawling <laughs> over to you real fast. Like, oh, my God. It's like, wah! Takes your ankles out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Get them where it hurts. The Achilles heel. The Achilles, the, <laughs> the Achilles tendon. That's what I meant. We all know what I'm talking about. I know what you meant. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it could still technically work in that context, I guess. Because if somebody sliced sliced your Achilles tendon, that would be your Achilles heel because you would go down. Listen, anatomy was not my strong point. Just because your mama didn't hold you by the heel and dip you in the river to make you eternal. Just like, you know, Achilles mother did. Man, I went back and watched Troy a couple of weeks ago. I love that movie. Have you ever seen that? What is it? Troy with Brad Pitt. It's old. It's I no. mean, it came out a long time ago. Oh, it's so good. Oh, wait. I think I did see that. He's Achilles in that. A long time ago. I don't remember. Mm. So as we wrap this up, Jesse, let me get your opinion. Let's put our hands where we can't see them, and then let's bring them up with some numbers on them. Ready? Here we go. In three, in two, and in one. Bring it up. What you give it? You gave it a three? And a half. Okay, I gave it a four and a half. Okay, I thought you'd have given this one a little bit higher. Three and a half's not terrible, but I was expecting a higher score from you on this one because it was so tense. It was tense, but it was kind of slow. I could, I could see that. I could see Just that. Just the parts with Rick was really tense, but when, what, when that wasn't happening, it was slow. So as we wrap it up, tell me what you think. Where do you, where do you think we're going? Like you got you you know Glenn and Tara with Abraham Rosita and Eugene. You've got uh, Maggie, Sasha, and Bob together. You got Tyrese, Carol, Mika, and um, Lizzie. Lizzie together, and Judith, Daryl, and Beth. Where do you think we're going? What do you think's going to happen? Uh, I think uh, Glenn is definitely going to find. Maggie, I've got her name for a second. And now he has three extra people with yep. him on this mission, which is awesome because none of those people signed up for that. But Glenn was just like, okay, we're doing this. Like he thought he was gonna have to do it alone. Yep. And now he's got a whole a whole slew of people. And they're pretty badass, I think. Yep. Um, so far. And then I am still waiting to see what happens with Tyrese and Carol. So I feel like maybe we'll find out in the next episode what goes on there. Maybe so. Um, and I'm really excited for um, for them, for Tyrese and all of them to meet back up with Rick and them so that Rick and them can find out that Judith is actually still alive because I can't wait to see like the reaction to that. Oh, yeah. But I think that we might have to give it a little bit of time. True story. Well, no, hold on because... They're all still kind of close. I think the Glenn and Maggie thing is going to take time. Okay. Because okay. they're so far away. We'll have the to other wait ones are still kind of close. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We still have... Or so we still got five episodes this season, so we'll see where it goes. But again, make sure to subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. It helps the algorithms to get our stuff out there. Also, don't forget you can support the channel by going over to patreon.com for extra content where you get these at least a day early. Um, Sometimes it's just audio, but, you know, either way, we try to give it out early. And a lot of people just listen to it anyways versus watching it. So uh, you can get this a day earlier. I podcast with JP over there. Sometimes I have Matt, Seth, other people. It's a lot of extra content, and it's a good time. So uh, check out Patreon. Go to moviepallet.com where you can use Podcast 15, get some cool art, and get 15% off. That also helps to support the channel. And super thanks and all that cool stuff. So um, we're going to get Jesse a better setup. We're getting there. If only YouTube will give me my money. Anyways, <laughs> we'll see you on Friday. I'm Justin. I'm Jesse. And we're the Podcasting Dad. Adios. Adios.